All right, I'm turning back. We don't quite have enough to make it. Not the ideal way to start out the day here. The FAA dictated that the cylinders had to be replaced, and it was time. A top overhaul with extras, like the exhaust system replacement, the turbo housing replacement, and many other things. The Centurion was gone for about two months as Cessna John Effinger worked his magic. Then came time for the first flight. John went up with a safety pilot, Mark Zimmerman, a 210 expert himself. Pour him here. Okay, oil pressure. I'm gonna lean it out. I'm gonna let the brakes off. We'll roll a little bit here. All right, oil pressure should be up on the monitor pretty soon here. BFD did not come up yet. It's on its way. Okay. Yeah, we're at 97. I figured at 116 degrees yesterday, uh, we'll be pretty close to 100 to start up this morning. Okay, seat belts. We're gonna do everything kind of quick here. Um, you're the senior captain, so if things go to poo, you've got the control. Oh no, oh no, no, don't blame this on me. Yeah, yeah, that's the way it's gonna <laughs> right. work. Oh, I well. want you to work radios. I'm gonna kind of look and fly off the engine monitor on takeoff. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look over here, check my fuel flow and manifold pressure. Um, I'll do my scan of the factory instruments. Is there we're anything not you want be, me to read off here? Well, no, we're not gonna be too concerned. We're gonna look at the engine monitor, but as a reference right now. Um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do my mag check right now. We're just looking for anything major. Okay, mags are good. That's all we're gonna do right now. We're gonna get it in the air. All I wanna hear from you is abort, abort, abort on takeoff and rotation. Other than that, we're really not going to talk a whole lot. Um, you know, you'll have the engine monitor. Um, I'm going to do the factory gauges. You know, we're looking for something major here. Um, you know, oil pressure, uh, obvious loss of power. If we have to if we have to take off and we're got airspeed already on the runway, we're gonna probably go right to this gravel field. I looked at it on the way out where the railroad track just got put in. We're gonna probably have to go there. Uh, I'm gonna turn out to the left. We're gonna cross over midfield. We should be able to get plenty altitude. We'll get over top of Copeland. We'll do a racetrack to the west of Copeland, 3,500 feet. And at that point, we can kind of settle in a little bit and uh, look at everything closely. That sounds like a good plan to me. Yeah, if uh, we got to go somewhere, the west is the only place to land out here off the airport. So, okay. okay. With that said, let's, let's uh, where let's, are we at? Let's get 123.05 up. Okay. All right, you want me to do this? Yeah, you got radios. All right, here we go. Hey, Hicks traffic, uh, Centurion departing runway 14 Hicks, be uh, cross over to the left and over midfield for a uh, departure on an engine check here. Do your shuffle. Okay, I, I'm locked. Okay, we're ready to go. I'm going to right, go 10 degrees. Virtually ready to no go. wind, straight down the runway, get her right on the center line. Okay, looking good. Straight down that center line. Yeah, I've got all that. Let's not talk unless we need to. Positive right. Everything's good to go. Gear coming up. Pull back a little manifold. Keep the RPM in right now.
We've got our cow flaps wide open. They need to stay yes, wide open for the now next we four hours. CHDs. It looks real good. Looks real good. We're up. Because I'm pulling back a little manifold pressure now. Now I'm going to get the prop back. Just get it. Top of the green. Okay, we're going to keep this setting for right now while we climb. So 100 knots, and we're climbing only 400 foot a minute. That's I, a little anemic. Yeah, just let's let the let the speed build up. Let's let's climb out at about I 120. Uh, get the nose down. How's our CHTs? CHTs, our Good. highest one is of 357. Oil pressure is great. I'm going to flatten out the climb again. We've got, now well, I'm going to keep it where I'm at actually. We don't quite have enough to make it just yet to uh, Copeland. Everything field to the left if we need it. I'm just going to keep all that open field there. And we'll keep our climb. It's a little anemic on the climb. I expected a little better than that. Uh, CHTs are still good. Yeah, 350 is the highest one, so I'm, I'm happy there. Yeah, 32 and a half gallons are better on the fuel flow. It looks really good. That's keep, keeping us cool. Got T's below 1300. That's a good thing. Yeah, that's where we should be. 12 feet. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, new turbo. That's that's real good. Yeah, I'm gonna keep the fuel at it. We're on the full tank still. I'm just, you know, we got flaps up, and. Uh, 120. We're just we just weren't climbing real good. Got a little bit of a miss here too, John. Yeah. Yeah. When I pulled back on the fuel, I really felt it. I just leave it full ridge. Um, we're gonna climb. I think we're gonna go back. I don't like that miss. We shouldn't have had any miss there. I mean, as soon as I pull back on the fuel. Um, yeah, let's get, let's, uh, that sounds like a good plan because we're, we're full rich and we're only showing 25 gallons an hour. All right, I'm turning back. Hicks is gonna be a straight in. Uh, we're on frequency. Again, I want you to do the radios. I'm at, I'm only at 1,500 feet. I don't like it. Uh, Hicks traffic, uh, Centurions over Copeland will be uh, headed back for the field for a straight in runway one for Hicks. Now we've got 23 inches of uh, manifold pressure. Or, Right back here to the right. There we go. Yeah, we're gonna hold this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold the 1500 foot till we get in. Not the ideal way to start out the day here. Well, it feels, it feels the engine feels real good where we are right now. I didn't lock the throttle, so we're losing manifold pressure. That's that's good cause for why we're. Well, let's let's see here. That you bought the manifold pressure back up, and that shows us at twenty eight point three. That's looking good. I didn't lock it. I I let. That was my bad. I didn't lock the throttle. Little. I little like bit these, of apprehension here. Well, I like these. I like these fuel flows a lot better. Okay, that's a little better. I've got 500 foot a minute and almost 31 inches the top of the green on everything. I'm still not sure about that fuel flow. That... Well, altitude's your friend. You know, 
I had to, I was holding the throttle when I, uh, well, actually I didn't. I let off the throttle whenever I adjusted the mixture. So we'll get a little more altitude here. Another thousand foot and we'll try it again. How about that? Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah. So 353, is that where you lock it? No, but I will now. Number five, that's the hot one. Uh, yeah, I still don't like the idea. It definitely was a little rough when I started yeah, to lean it, it. It sure was. I Let's guess I guess that's what kind of threw me off uh, without watching the, the throttle migrating on me. But uh, I feel a little better now. Why don't we get the uh, fan on, outside air on, kind of. I start working up a little sweat there. <laughs> All right, you're looking good now. Uh, Thank you. That feels a lot better. Everything's no air conditioning, right? It's off. It's off. Just the fan. Okay. Usually what I like to do is come out here and uh, just orbit to the west at 35, do a couple of little racetrack circles, you know, make sure everything here is looking good, which it is. So 358 now, uh, number three is the hottest. So, but uh, I'm going to keep the fuel going just for a little longer. I'm going to get the 35 and level out. And at that point, we'll uh, we'll try to lean again, and then we got plenty altitude to head right on back over to Hicks if need be. I think that's a good plan. Let's stick with our guns and let's see what this thing will do for a little bit. Oil temps looking good, 203. You know, throwing a lot of fuel. We're still in the left tank. Yeah, I'm just curious. It says for the first two hours, level flight should be at 75% power, which we are. With a TIT at or below 1380, and we which are. we are. That's 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 the key right there. A little background here. Don and I have been flying 210s for the last five years, at least. Oh. What, just me and you? Yeah, we've, yeah. Been, we've been doing this a long time. Uh, yeah, I've been flying them, and he's been wrenching on them, heck, since Moby Dick was a minute. And, uh... Well, first we ought to introduce ourselves. Okay, go ahead. Uh, it's, it's, it's your wife is so fond of two rednecks in an airplane. Uh, that, that's, oh, no, no, hillbillies. Yeah, well, yeah, he, hillbillies? That's what, no, that's what she said. She said uh, when, we, when she saw Dan's uh, first S video on taking off, uh, that's uh, two hicks in an airplane. So this is volume two of two hicks in an airplane. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And we already that. saw what not to do. Yeah, yeah. So you we know? don't we don't want any we don't want any more cylinder issues or or uh, low compression issues. This uh this is a brand new uh, set of cylinders on Dan's airplane. And what we're doing here is we're trying to uh, get them broken in. And uh, what we're doing, I guess you'd be better apt to explain what a break-in procedure is. Well, we'll talk about that after we do a couple of maneuvers here. Right now, I want to kind of look at the engine. We're trying to keep the CHTs down. We're throwing a lot of fuel at it. We're on the full tank. And uh, we're going to momentarily here, we're going to try to lean it out again. Last time we tried to lean it out, there was a most definite miss. Uh, it wasn't a comfort. We were pretty low. Yeah, we were now low we've got RPM. some altitude. And uh, uh, low manifold pressure. We're going to square things up again, get a good side on Hicks. We're going to get a little south of uh, Copeland, so we got a, a lot of outs here. And then we're going to try to lean it again and see if we can get rid of that little roughness but it could have easily been loaded up plugs a lot of fuel a lot of preservative was in there so I think we're going to try that again Let's, I wouldn't get too lean I wouldn't go any more than well this we're going to watch our temperatures and just see see I couldn't do this before okay so we're going to get an EGT rise all across the board. 
We're still 24 and a half. We should start seeing the EGTs coming up. I see the... Okay, so we got a nice rise. We got a nice rise here. Now watch your TIT. There's yep. 1350. Oh. Okay, so it's clear. It's cleared out now. We're gonna we're gonna probably stabilize right there. And it's running like a clock. Yeah. So how come you didn't tell me that I had the throttle uh, creeping away on me there? I looked down there and You're I thought, supposed to be my uh, flight engineer and senior I'm, captain. I'm looking at that and I'm like, well, he's headed back for Hicks and he's pulling the power back. He wants to keep power in so he can make this yeah. descent. So <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, well, he knows what he's doing. And, and you did. I did. You, it's, it's just instinctively that you pull the power back to start making that descent. And, I, you know, I didn't, they felt like it warranted. Well, what I was mean, really a good job. What was really through. disconcerting for me is uh, when we pulled back on that mixture. And it started and running right. rough. I yeah. I don't I can't tell you I've ever seen that before. Um, well, I can. And tell like you. I said, I feel like that was that, that was, had more to do with uh, with the manifold the, pressure. Well, the man not really manifold pressure so much as the uh, the plugs and the initial run. I mean, we really didn't burn anything off right there except for takeoff. And uh, and but then when it started creeping back, it, it just got it just got a little dirty. Yeah, that uh, that little miss, you feel that in your seat, and then you feel it in your Ooh, stomach. That's, that's an uncomfortable feeling at, with with uh, major maintenance. You know, I just don't like that. I've never been fond of adrenaline. No. And we're supposed to, this is Saturday, this is a day off, so, uh, you know, this is supposed to be fun. Well, hey, you get so a chance. So, let's go chance. ahead and make it fun, and not too exciting. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm and, in on uh, that. How much fun can it be that a guy gives you his airplane and says, here, go break it in for me, huh? Well, it could be exciting. You just never know. And uh, I like it just the way it is, fun. So I'm gonna do a, let's see where we're at. We're still at low 1300s. Uh, number three is 371. It's really, I don't I don't want to change anything up. I like the way everything's going here. Uh, I'd go a gradual But climb. I'm gonna go ahead and climb about three, 400 foot a minute at the most here. And we'll continue to watch the CHTs and the climb. I think we can safely say that this airplane is uh, successfully doing everything it's supposed to do. I'd go ahead and pump another couple of inches of manifold pressure, and you might even want to put just a touch more fuel into it. Yeah, we will. Let's just see for... Okay, I saw everything come up, so... Oh yeah, look at the those fuel flows. Yeah, that yeah, it's stable. Uh, what that what that fuel's doing in this fire breathing turbo engine is cooling those cylinders off. I take it I take it on up another thousand feet. That will that'll put us on uh, western altitudes, 6,500. Just nice okay. nice easy climb. Might pump in another inch of manifold pressure right here. Yeah, and our temperatures are actually cooling down, so the cylinders are starting to break in a little bit. Okay, that that uh, let's go back to that. What's going on with a with a cylinder? The mechanics and metallurgy of what's taking place in a cylinder bore and the rings on the cylinder. The the book calls for 75 percent power, which is. On this airplane, it's 30 inches of manifold pressure and 2,500 RPM, and that's 7,500. But uh, what I was gathering at, these honing marks inside the uh, cylinder bore keep oil in there. Uh, that, that keeps your rings lubricated going up and down in the piston, or the pistons going up and down in these cylinder bores, but you've got these rings that, that act as seals, and there's rough edges on both the hone marks and on your edges of your uh, piston rings that actually 
hone themselves in together as you're doing a break-in. Initially, you've got a lot of uh, friction, and that friction translates to cylinder head temperature, and uh, it will be higher as you're breaking it in. And what you're looking for, that and a wall temperature. And uh, as the engine, the, the ring seat to the cylinder bore, the temperatures, your oil temperature and your cylinder head temperature should drop. You should see about a, what, a 10 degree drop. And then the, 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 the break-in continuation happens for about the next minimum of 10 hours. A lot of people say the rings are seated immediately, but I don't know that I agree with that. This, uh, this is a really good engine install. It looks and sounds, I don't know where, how you could ask for any better. Yeah, I mean, it's still below 1300. All right, now you're trimmed up, and I'd go ahead and put in another inch of manifold pressure. It seems to be losing about an inch every thousand feet. We may have a, a turbo controller issue. That's the, in this uh, manual that you emailed me, it says that the, you know, for a turbocharged engine, you know, they, they, they prefer that you go anywhere from five to 12,000 feet to do your break in for the first four hours and they, they recommend that you leave the cow flaps open, then you leave it rich. And that's what we're doing. And watch your temperatures. Okay, it's uh, it's 10.23 local time, but we fell. 11 o'clock would be a good time to land at Cisco. That's now that we know they've got a really good deli, uh -huh. and they got a crew car, so that'd be a good time to stop, get a nice tea, maybe a light snack or a light lunch, top off with fuel, or top off with fuel first, get hungry, you know, fueling up, get an appetite. You velvet tongue devil.